So if we watch, if we just watch the video, right, you would see that it, it just falls right there. But you can't, you can't really measure. She's very happy about this. So, so what we can do with this, though, is we can take that. You can't really see anything from the video, right? Even if on the phone, it's really hard to get good data from it. So there's a free program online. It's called Tracker. It's a video analysis software. It's an name of it. It's free. If you Google it, you can check it out. It, it's really straightforward. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this uh, video, 10.0.3.1.1, and I'm going to upload it, open it in Tracker. So 10.0.3.1.1. So you load it up, and there you go, wonderful. Now we're, we're perfect, everything is great. Oh, wait a second. <laughs> so and this is a common problem, right? So if you get the video, and the video is sideways, you're going to have to do something right off the bat. So you go under where it says um, video. And then there's a, a tab called filters. You guys can see what I'm doing, right? Yeah. So filters, a new filter, and you can change all sorts of things. So if you wanted to, you can negative, change the perspective, you can resize it, you can change the brightness. Um, but we're going to rotate it. And I want to rotate it forward, so that's minus 90 degrees. And there you go. So now we've got our video like that. <laughs> the next thing we need to do is we need to tell Tracker uh, how big things are, right? So you need to have a scale. It's not magic, you can't figure it out for itself. So up here, there is a, where is this? No, that's our axis, we create a calibration tool. So you wanna have a calibration stick. The calibration stick tells the video how much each pixel is in terms of whatever unit you want it to be. You can make it in miles, you can make it in inches, we're going to go with meters because the acceleration we measure is in meters per second squared, right? So I'm going to make a calibration stick. It's that little blue thing, right? It says 100 on it. So one nice thing you can do with trackers, is you can zoom in all the way, all the way, as much as you like on the video. And when I say all the way, I mean you can literally get down to the fingernail exactly how far away. And it'll tell you right away how good you're, you can't, I'm sorry, I'm not doing this up, and I'm not focusing on your face, so it's all fine, it's all fine. Now, one thing with this is 100 is going to, we don't want it as 100, because 100 would be centimeters, right? There's 100 centimeters in a meter. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this blue line, put one end of it at one side of the meter stick, and then I'm going to move the other side of it and move it all the way down. That's what we want to do, move it all the way as far as we can move it down. Let's get this thing stretched out a little bit. All the way down, all the way to the floor. Right, because I know down over here, the bottom of the meter stick, that's one meter, right? This whole blue bar now is one meter. So, sorry, sorry. <laughs> don't focus on the faces, don't focus on the faces. <laughs> So uh, I'm now going to change it. Instead of it being, and we're a little, thing, a little off of vertical, but you know, hopefully it's not going to make a major difference. So what I'm going to do now is change that from the length being 100. I'm going to make the length uh, one. Uh, enter, find, okay. So now we've got our calibration stick all set up. Um, next thing we need to do is set an axis, right? So to set the axis. I want, you can set them in a lot of different places. You can set the axes at the origin, like where it hits the ground if you wanted to. But I'm going to set the axes so that this is the X and Y plane. I want to set it in so it zooms in onto the ball, where the ball starts. Now, the trick is, I've got to figure out exactly the position where the ball is before it starts to fall. So I'm going to start advancing this, the video forward, one frame at a time until I get to the, the frame where it just starts to fall. So I'm just gonna skip a couple more. Okay, so that's where it starts to fall, right? So we back it up, one frame, two frames, three frames, four frames. There you go. So her hand is holding it at this point, we can consider that to be our zero, right? Uh, we take our axes, I would line it up to the bottom of the frame, right? Because that's like, the, I'll say that's the starting point is the bottom. 
And then every time I track that ball, I'm going to track it from the bottom so that that's where each position is going to be. Right? So as it falls down, I want, to figure, I want to make sure that this axis all lines up, right? So it should just be a straight line from the ball, straight down. I mean, it's not exactly perfect, so what I can do is I can rotate my axis so it lines up with the fall. So I can take this line. <laughs> Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sometimes it's a little, it's a little. So see that little blur right there? That blur, the blur is the red ball. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate the axes so it lines up with the blur. <laughs> that makes sense, right? Fine. So we skip. It keeps going down, going down, going down, and at some point it hits the ground right down there. Fine. So let's back it up. Two more frames. This is the last frame. I know it's still currently in free fall, so I might set that as my last frame. The bottom frame is hard to tell because I don't know if it's hit the ground yet for sure on that small time frame. Right, so I'm going to set that as my end frame. Set that to the end frame. Go back to the beginning. And right now, I haven't even really picked any of the data up. All we're doing right now is sort of setting up the rules, right? So the video needs very, very specific rules for it to be able to tell exactly where the ball is and when the ball is at that position. So we zoom in a little more now to the frame where it starts. Back it up. One, two, three. Okay, so that's going to be our start frame, right? We'll call that frame, start frame. And you right click on the bottom to change these settings and I'm going to set that to the start frame of the video. Okay, fine. Now we can actually track the position of the ball. To do that, we're going to create um, a track, right, that's a point mass, right? We're going to pretend that the whole mass of the ball is concentrated just at that point on the bottom of the ball. It's not actually true. But it's good enough for us since we're going to say that's a fixed position as it falls down. We're going to call that the, the spot we're going to track, the very bottom of the ball. You could do it from the center of the ball if you wanted to. You just have to be consistent that if you're going to pick a spot, stay with that spot as always the positional spot, right? So I'm going to call the point mass, and then I'm going to call that the, let's say, red ball, right? Enter, fine. Now, here's where you track it. So what you do on your computer, if you press the shift button, you click on the red ball. That's the thing we're going to track, right? Then I hold down the shift, should be the shift button, right? See how the cursor changes from being a regular cursor to being a little box? This box is how I track the ball. I hold down the shift button and then the box is going to show up. So now I'm going to click at the bottom of where the ball is and then it should advance the frame. So that's frame two, frame three, frame four. Now it's going to get a little tricky as it falls, because as it falls and increases velocity, you're going to get more blur. Because while the aperture is open, collecting a picture, the ball moves a little bit. That's what creates blur whenever you take a, a video or a frame, since so it's in motion. So what you do is you pick the bottom of the blur. right? If you're going to pick the bottom, pick the bottom of the blur as your uh, position. So there's the bottom of that, there's the bottom of that, there's the bottom of that, slide it down a little bit, bottom there, there, <laughs> Now that, the, the graph to the right is not what we want. What's wrong with that graph? It's, it's X and T on the top right hand side. We don't want X and T, we want um, Y. Fix that so it shows the Y position, right? So, ooh, I forgot something. I don't want the, this to be down. I want down to be positive for this so we can get see the, the right type of look. So I'm going to take this whole axis and I'm going to rotate it all the way around, like that. And now you see how the graph is now gone positive, right? Because I've declared down to be positive. That way you get to see the, and pretend it's a positive direction, right? Continuing on on tracking, we're, and notice, what does the shape of the graph look like? Exponential. It's an exponential curve, which is what we should expect for position um, as something falls, right? So back to where we were tracking, hold down shift, press the button, 
Let's see. Well, no, no, no. I forgot to click. Press the button there. Press the button right there. Press the button there. Oh, they changed the axis on this again, didn't they? Okay, so that's fine. Um, so we got a graph, right? I, they, they swapped the axes again on us for some strange reason. I'm gonna, you can, uh, by the way, the nice thing about this, you can change things around and in, in real time shift your data. So if your axis is a little off in the track, all I gotta do is just rotate it around and then the program will automatically um, track the data. And I think data point 17 is not quite right because I think it might have bounced. See how it's a little too close, 17? I don't think you can see it. 17 is a little too close to 16, so I suspect there was a, an issue there. Backtrack it for you. Oh yeah, it totally went wrong. So 16, 17, I think because it's so blurry, it's kind of hard to see exactly what happened. Yeah, see it? See it, it's actually not there. So another thing you can do is you can shift your positions if you notice that one looks wrong you can shift it to what's more apparently right. So you can see the red blur all through the black thing. So one of the things you want to do, when you take the data, make sure your background is really light colored so that you're not, um, you can clearly see you know, where the position is for everything. Okay, fine. So now we got some data, it's a, a chart. And notice the time frame. Each one of these things is 34 seconds away. No, not 34. It's point 34 seconds between every picture, right? So what is 1 divided by 0.34 seconds? What does that give us? One point. Per second, there are 29.9. Oh, 29. Right. No, it's 2.9. No, but when you divide that, it's 2.9. But technically, there should be 29 frames or 30 frames yeah, yeah, per yeah. second. Yeah, it should be about 30 frames per second, so I'm not quite sure why. Oh, there's a 0.03. That's why. That would explain it. Not 0 0.34. 0 0.034. So they, you're basically taking a picture every 3 tenths of a second, right? So that would explain the 29 frames per second. If you add a 60 frame per second camera, you'll get better results because the blur will be less, right? Because the exposure is going to be smaller. And you're going to get uh, more frames. You'll get, you know, this will be uh, 1.015 seconds per every shot. Okay? So now we got the data, we can get some practical things out of it, and we can calculate our acceleration due to gravity because we've got position and we've got time, right? So what we're going to do is on your, your chart, you're going to take the table, you want to make sure that the table, the table shows, um, see how it has the y-axis and it's got the x-axis, I don't care about the x-values because we're not talking about the x-direction in this. I want the y and I want the vy. Vy stands for the velocity in the y-direction. So when I do that and I hit close, now I've got three columns of data. I've got position, I mean, I've got time, I've got vertical position, and I've got the vertical velocity. So if I highlight all that stuff, right click, and I copy the second data you want with full precision, I'm going to take it over to um, a spreadsheet. So you can do this in Microsoft Excel, you can do this in um, Google Docs, whatever you, you prefer as your thing. If you like <laughs> Apple, I'm sure there's something Apple can do. Um, so you go to a spreadsheet. You right click, you paste the data, right? You want to spread it out a little bit so it's, um, it's fine. I think that's pretty good. Right there. Let me get that out a little bit. So this, if you notice now, is we have time data that's in scientific notation, and every single frame, that's exactly how precise the phone, the phone knows each frame in terms of time. So in that entirety of time, we went from zero to... Um, 5.69, so it took a half, a little bit, about 0.6 seconds for that ball to fall from the position it was dropped all the way down to the bottom. Okay, that's fine. So now we can create a, data, a graph of the data. So what we're going to do, and this is important because you guys need to know how to make graphs in Excel. Um, we go to Insert, 
Down on the chart type, you have scatter plot. Whenever you do data and physics, scatter plot's the way to go. Um, so we're going to get a scatter plot. And okay, so I got two sets of data. I don't really want both of this data. What I want to do is I'm going to right click on the chart. I'm going to select the data, right? Now, I don't really care. I don't want the position versus time. I mean, you could if you want to, but if I want to find, if you're trying to find the acceleration, how can we find acceleration in general? How do you find acceleration? Sorry, so I raise our hand. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, it's slope of the velocity versus time graph, right? So if I can make a get a velocity versus time graph of that ball falling down, all I need to do is find the slope of the graph, and that should tell me my acceleration. Does that make sense? Right? So what I'm going to do is I don't care about the position. I mean, it, for some things it might be beneficial to have a position, but we don't need in this case. So all I want is, is the velocity versus time, and then um, that's it, right? So I hit OK. Now the graph is better. Now I think those last two data points are a little messed up because, like I said, it was kind of hard to read the last one. So since the, the bottom one's not really quite right, I'm just going to drop those last two data points because you don't need all of the data to be able to get a good trend. So I'm going to delete those last two data points, and that looks more like it makes sense, OK? And notice, what is the shape of this like? What shape does it look like, just looking at it? It's like a linear, it's a line, right? So it's actually, it, it follows very well with what we expect in terms of the uh, velocity. Each one of these average velocities, which is the time interval velocities, are, are pretty good because it's a very small time interval. We know the, with pretty good accuracy the amount of velocity at that time frame, right? So to find our acceleration, it's not going to take a lot of work. You just go down to where it says uh, add a trend line. Right? And then you're going to add a linear trend line that matches up with the data. This is what I, you know, we need a linear trend line. And then the most important thing of all is we need the equation on the chart. So we're going to display the equation on the chart. And there's our, our um, that's it. That's the deal. Right? So that data, right, when you display the equation on the chart, you're going to get, uh, it's going to show a linear equation. It says y is equal to... 10.897x minus 0.1612. Now we really don't care about this stuff. We care about the y is equal to mx plus b, right? We don't really care about anything else except for this part, right? So when you look at the velocity versus time graph and you see that the, the trend line says y is equal to 10.897x minus 16.12, our acceleration is the slope of that line, so our acceleration is uh, 10.897 meters per second squared. Now how good is that? Well, the way you figure that out is you, we want to look at the percent error. So if we go to the, uh, the document, Right, and you scroll down to where it says, uh, so you're going to be filling out a couple of things for your data. Right, <laughs> time of fall, you're going to look at the, dis the difference between the starting time and the ending time, that'll tell you your time of fall. The distance of the fall, you look at the, this is a little tricky to do because it's kind of, you have to try to figure out exactly the position where it hits the ground, so don't stress too much about that. But the value for G, our first, my first trial that I did right here, I got 10.897 meters per second squared. Right? And then to find the percent error, New York State uh, has a predicted G of 9.803. G is slightly different depending on where you go on Earth. If you go to higher elevations, it's a little lower. If you go to the equator, it's a little lower. The North Pole, it's a little stronger. So on, in New York State, we're, it's predicted to be 9.803. So we basically, we're going to take our predicted, right? Nine. 0.803 um, minus the actual, which we found was 10.897, and then we divide that by the predicted, which was 9.803. So what do we get? What is that minus that divided by the bottom one? The order might be different. I think it's ten, technically it's actually 10 minus 8, but we didn't fix it up. I think it's supposed to technically be 
0.897 minus 9.803. Because you just want a positive value. Let's look at the absolute value of it. What do we get? Point one 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 five nine. Point one 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 five nine. One 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 five. That's good enough. So that's going to be eleven point five percent. Where? It's eleven point fifteen percent. No, it's one one one. Oh, okay. Well, eleven oh one 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 five nine. Eleven point two percent error. Wouldn't want to go too far off. Okay. All right, uh, now I suspect if you have a better phone than I do for my camera, I, I didn't play around with the settings, um, you might be able to get better results if you have more data, right? So I'm kind of limited since my phone only can do 30 frames per second, at least I didn't find a different way to change it up. Um, you might be able to get better data for the more data. So the more data points you take and the more little dots you put, you're going to get better accuracy.